Hey, do you guys remember these, these, and these? Well, we should bring back whatever the hell these things are because they're neat. The early 2000s was a pretty experimental year for fashion trends and style. From it birthed denim atrocities, animal prints, glitter on just about anything you can think of, thongs, MySpace, and the blueprints of Disney style guides for years to come. Who knew what awful and tacky trends would find their way into the mainstream next? If I could personify that era into a person, I would describe it as, Mom, I'm just finding myself, okay? Even still, we tend to look back on this period with a lot of fondness as a lot of really great styles were birthed from this era. In fact, I have the most fond memories of that transformative fashion trend known as the Y2K aesthetic that's surprisingly been making a steady comeback in these last two or three years. The Y2K aesthetic specifically was most popular from 1998 to around 2003 and was named after the Y2K bug, you know, that little panicked period where we thought all of our technology would cease to work once we hit the year 2000. That was a legitimate time of panic and it was so crazy and I just remember my mom stocking up on a lot of water and storing it in the basement like we lived in some kind of bunker. But that's not what this episode's about. If you want to know more about the Y2K bug, I'm sure you can find many videos on this subject. <coughs> Internet historian. But from the sphere of obsolete technology and the end of the world, it actually somehow birthed its own fashion trend. The Y2K aesthetic was seen in music, television, hardware design, video games, and fashion, and was characterized by its heavy focus on futuristic tech, sheen, metallic textures, shiny clothing, gradients, blob of texture, and anything that had a semblance of a sleek and futuristic look. It was our envisioning of the 21st century as we moved from 1999 to the year 2000. Gone were the days of people imagining an 80s inspired neon future, the new look of the future was the Y2K aesthetic. If you wake up in a room like this, you're either in a Y2K themed video or you've been abducted by aliens, I'm sorry. This trend was everywhere and my favorite adopters of this style was both in the fashion industry and also in the tech industry. Look at this thing, it's so beautiful. This was the Y2K aesthetic for the world of tech. Clear, translucent, and sheen. And I like, love these things. You would see this on handheld pets, Game Boys, consoles, and computers. The focus of this fashion was on the hardware chips and the tiny little motherboards. And what better way to showcase this than to make the objects semi-transparent? This trend was a big hit among consumers, and it all started with the release of the iMac G3. Also known as the Macintosh that saved Apple. It wasn't until the iMac's release that we really started to see this as take off in the tech industry. The iMac G3, being the first of its line, was an all-in-one PC where the monitor and computer were merged into a single enclosure, which was seen as revolutionary at the time. Original models were released in Bondi Blue and later branched out into a line of brightly colored translucent plastic casings. This translucent trim was also included in the mouse and keyboard accessories that came with the PC. It was released in 1998 after Steve Jobs stepped in as CEO the following year at Apple where during a presentation he famously said, the back of our computer looks better than the front of the other guys. The back of this thing looks better than the front of the other guys, by the way. I mean, this is incredible compared to anything else out there. It looks like it's from another planet. And a good planet. A planet with better designers. Girl, the shade, the shade of it all. But he wasn't wrong. This high-end design fully encapsulated the outer world, the future tech aesthetic of the Y2K perfectly. Every kid I knew wanted one of these things. It just screamed the future. It was sleek and bold and just the perfect accessory to colorize any kid's bedroom. And it was such a major change from the beige builds we all grew up with. Ugh. Adding customization to personal computers was one of the smartest decisions made by Apple's industrial designer, Jonathan Ive. Jo Jonathan Eve? Jon Jonathan Le Lev. Jo I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. Because that little bit of detail and customization really put an emphasis on the idea of your computer being a personal at-home system. The line of IMAX also had some really great advertising. I mean, if Jeff Goldblum wants to sell me a PC, you bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna pick one up. Like, where do I sign? How many times do you say beige? Never. Because it's, it's one of the worst colors. It's hardly even a color. It's like oatmeal or sand or it's nothing. It's beige, it's boring, it's bland. Now computers, why in heaven's name 
Have the people who've made computers before never done anything but beige? That's nuts. That's nuts. Have they been in thinking jail? That's crazy. The iMac wasn't just revolutionary in its design, but also opted for higher-end technology by leaving behind hardware trends that would very soon become obsolete. It abandoned the floppy disk altogether and was the first computer to introduce USB ports as a standard with a mouse and keyboard connector, which was a huge step away from previous Macintosh peripherals. Apple definitely wasn't the first to invent the translucent plastic gel, but they were certainly the first to get the ball rolling on a trend that would be known known to all as the Y2K aesthetic. And with the growing success of the iMac G3, pretty soon these shell casings started popping up in all facets of the tech industry. From Nintendo 64 consoles to memory cards and controllers, even virtual pets, cell phones, and various handheld devices began to sport this new and innovative look. I mean, look at these things, they just complement the hardware so well, I can't even really explain it. But they definitely succeeded in giving items that futuristic feel. And it looks so cute and stylish, and look at my trans this in pink bag. So I bet you're wondering what kind of revival the Y2K aesthetic has undergone in this day and age. As fashion trends tend to follow the 20 year rule, where something that was popular 20 years ago will see a resurgence in popularity 20 years later, I've been seeing the Y2K aesthetic make a steady comeback over on sites like Instagram, in music videos, and even on television. The lasting impact of this fashion even birthed its own subgenre that popped up in 2011 known as C-Punk, that utilizes a lot of imagery from the Y2K cyberpunk culture. I was like 9 years old during the Y2K and was therefore unable to partake in the glittery trends of socialites, brat dolls, or future tech space dolls. So now that this style has come back, I can finally live out my dreams of being a blinged out brat doll Thadiana. The future is freaky. So what about the tech industry? Has this trend faded out completely? While the Y2K comeback definitely isn't as in your face as it is in the music and fashion scene, it definitely has made somewhat of a resurgence in the tech industry. Yeah, weird. It's just been happening right under our noses. And a lot of us didn't even notice. That's because when it came back, the whole aesthetic was slightly evolved. The translucent Y2K style we all know and love came back and mixed itself in with the world of top tier professional slash competitive gaming PC builds, mainly in the form of tower builds and gaming rigs, you know, the shell casings that hold our beloved computer parts. In the last couple of years, gaming rigs have become somewhat of an aesthetic. They went through a pimp my ride transformation where it wasn't just about building an efficient and high-end PC with with parts that could handle long hours of gaming and rendering, but they also became somewhat trendy. Having a visually pleasing PC tower and a good gaming rig became somewhat of an art among tech enthusiasts and gamers, as a lot of towers nowadays are made with the intention of showing off the components that lay inside because what's the point of buying liquid cooling neon lights and glowing fans and ram sticks if nobody's gonna see it? We need to see that tricked out motherboard. This shit's expensive. You better believe we're gonna have a fashion show. And throw in some pop figures for good measure. Pop figures are incredibly ugly, but they've never looked better inside of a PC. It's kind of weird. And the best way to showcase these new parts are with, you guessed it, that clear casing that we all know and love from the good old Y2K. And I absolutely love this integration and subtle return to form. Nowadays, that future yet vintage aesthetic we craved is interpreted mainly through the use of LED lighting and clear acrylic, making that translucent film or gel not as necessary because with the flick of a switch, we now have the luxury of being able to change the colors on the inside, which reflects off of the acrylic, changing the mood entirely. Now, can you imagine having one of these in clear acrylic with an internal light that just changed the color of the casing entirely back in the early 2000s? That would have really made all these custom colors obsolete. So the Y2K translucent trend did come back into style in the tech world, but just slightly modified. That, that shit didn't grow. It glowed. And instead of the monitor being the main focus of the fashion, it instead moved on to the PC casing. Which kind of makes sense, as monitors have gotten so much slimmer in the last 20 years, so there isn't really much there in terms of customization. Still, it would be really cool if translucent monitor shells returned in their own unique way. Overall, this new change opted for full transparency in LED lights as opposed to being restricted to dyed plastics. Because in the future, we also can't make up our friggin' minds and enjoy the freedom of change and versatility. So I guess the Y2K style hasn't really disappeared, but rather leveled up in many different ways in the tech industry, get it? 
level up because it's tech. But still, nothing beats those vintage callbacks that we occasionally see that echoes that once prevalent trend. Like the custom Joy-Con and Switch shells reminiscent of the Game Boy Color. Some have even adapted this style for modern cell phones and personally, I'd love to see a translucent shelled PS5. That would look futuristic as heck. And I had no idea how to end this video, so please enjoy a Y2K themed montage of me flexing some of my translucent gadgets to the beautiful sounds of early 2000s Europop. Enjoy. Enjoy.